Hi, I'm Neela Richardson, Chief Economist and Head of the ADP Research Institute. For the past several years, ADP has been surveying workers around the world in 17 different countries to understand their experiences in the workplace, everything from pay and performance to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Well, it's been quite a journey. In Europe alone, we surveyed over 15,000 workers this year. A mere few years ago, economic growth and optimism were high. With an aging workforce, employers faced an exodus of baby boomers, and the gig economy was just starting to explode. That brought with it an illusion of freedom on the one hand, but also concerns and questions about workers' rights on the other. Flexibility and flexible working had just begun to take hold in Europe, but just one in five workers here were able to take advantage of flexible work arrangements. And then the COVID-19 happened, that onslaught of the pandemic, and it really changed everything, particularly when it came to flexibility. In 2021, our global survey showed that workers were shaken, but optimistic. Optimism took a hit with more than a quarter of European workers reporting that they had been laid off either, either permanently or temporarily by their employer. Almost one in four workers took a pay cut here. But despite the major upheaval in their professional lives, workers saw a silver lining. When asked what impact the pandemic would have on the world of work in the next three years, more than half of the global workforce said, greater flexibility, and an opportunity to develop new skills. In 2022, the People at Work survey found that workers were on the move. After the initial shock of the pandemic wore off, workers worldwide had a year of reflection. Personal well-being were prioritized, as well as life outside of work became a key focus for employees. That focus led to wanting better worker conditions and greater flexibility and remote work options. As workers drifted back to the workplace, we learned through this survey that workers who had a mix of in-office and remote work were happiest, these hybrid workers. Indeed, two-thirds of workers in Europe said they'd consider looking for another job if their employer insisted that they return to the workplace full-time. Meanwhile, mental health came to fore as people struggled with coming back to work. And the great resignation that was made popular in the United States was showing some offshoots in Europe, with 11% of workers in Europe considering early retirement, having had, like the rest of us, time to ponder their work-life balance. In 2023, workers shifted their focus. New inflationary pressures and political turmoil impacted the European workforce. Though inflation is stabilizing, the cost of living crisis remains an ongoing concern, raising the expectation for a pay raise for workers. But something interesting in Europe, their expectations are lower than any other region. Oh, and by the way, some employers haven't covered the basics. In fact, around 5 in 10 employees say that they are sometimes, often, or always underpaid. And 6 in 10 workers report being so in both Germany and Switzerland. And while 76% of workers are optimistic about the future, 6 in 10 say that no sector will escape economic uncertainty, and three in 10 workers say that they don't feel secure in their jobs here in Europe. On the upside, we've learned that people are now more focused on their careers and rate it even more highly than flexibility of both hours and location. They want training and they want to be able to discuss their career opportunities openly. And there's much more awareness of what's going on behind the scenes when companies report their diversity, equity, and inclusion data. But as the gender gap continues to widen, there's a chance that some workers will take note and act on it. Seven in 10 workers in France would consider looking for another job if they found that their company 
had unfair gender pay gap policies. The importance of enjoying one's working day has also taken priority, up from 39% last year to 46% in Europe this year. And that's higher than other regions, perhaps because in Europe, there's a higher expectation of the quality of life in both home life and work life. But perhaps most surprising of all is the rise of the four-day work week. In Europe, just under a quarter of workers believe that it will be in a reality in the next five years. So now let's put it all together. Three years after the onslaught of the pandemic, worker sentiment has changed dramatically. But this year, clear trends are starting to emerge. Employees today want a caring workplace culture, one that includes progress on diversity, equity, and inclusion. They want flexibility on both work hours and work locations and training opportunities that help them stay motivated and engaged. Europe enjoys an enviable status as an attractive continent to work at, but in some areas like diversity and equity and inclusion, as well as pay rises, employers are falling behind other companies in other regions. That's why it's so important for employers to understand the changing and shifting and evolving sentiment of their workforce. For a deep dive into Europe data and insights, please check out our latest People at Work survey. 